Hello guys, my name is Yaka and I'll be your host for this webinar. You might have been liquid cooling for a few years now, but that doesn't mean you have all the answers. And if you feel like listening to some key information about liquid cooling, just please stick around. So now today we're going to talk about pumps. And when talking about pumps, there's one question that you can hear every often. What is the difference between a D5 and a DDC pump? Which one should you get and why? Now, both the D5 and DDC pumps have quite an old base design and none of those two have gone through major changes. Because basically, you cannot reinvent the wheel. Now, the only big change that we could see over the years is that both the D5 and the DDC pump got PWM speed control support. But before we go any further, it's important to mention that EK is supplying genuine D5 and DDC pumps and not some look-alike copies. So back to the pumps. The D5, as you can see here, is more massive and the DDC a little bit less. If we compare it by the measurement, so we can say that the D5, this one right here, measures about 56 millimeters. And the DDC itself, which is smaller, of course, it's about 27 millimeters. So you can see the comparison, it's quite smaller. The D5 pump offers a maximum theoretical flow rate of 1,500 liters per hour with a maximum head pressure of 3.9 meters. Now, head pressure in pumps is actually determined with a simple test. Hanging a hose vertically and measuring to what height the liquid can be pumped. Now this illustrates the pump's ability to push water through obstacle, as in restricted water block, radiator, etc. Now the DDC pumps that EK offers has a maximum flow rate of 1000 liters per hour with a maximum head pressure of 5.2 meters. Just by looking at specification you can conclude that DDC has a lower flow rate but is more capable of overcoming restrictive loops. Now the DDC pump works on the same simple spherical motor principle as the D5. The only moving part is a spherical shaped magnet impeller rotor which is seated on a ceramic ball right here. Now the rotors of both the D5 and DDC pumps are magnetically balanced and held in the designated position. Both pumps, the D5 and DDC, are water lubricated. In other words, they use a wet rotor design. So therefore it's strongly recommended not to run any of these pumps dry, even for a few seconds. Okay, so let's get to the point. The D5 offers bigger flow rates at a lower pressure, while the DDC pump has a higher pressure but lower flow rate. Also, it's important to know that small DDC pumps can be a bit noisier than the D5 models. Now, the DDC being more compact can also run a bit hot, of course, and that's why additional pump heat sinks are available on the market, like this one here. You can also get this in our EK shop. Now, these heat sinks are not necessary, but it's something that could prolong the life of the pump itself. So if you're building a complicated loop with many angled adapters and several water blocks, a pump with high pressure will have the advantage. But if you're building a small form factor PC with limited space, again, the DDC would be the smarter choice. Now the absolute all-arounder will still be the D5. It has high flow rates and it runs cool and silent. In most cases, one D5 can run for several years without breaking a sweat. So another topic for today, does the loop order matter or not? Now before moving forward, we have to address the topic of serial and parallel configuration. Now with the serial configuration, the cooling liquid flows from one part to another. So the pump is circulating the coolant, pushing it through the GP water block, CP water block, radiator, and then coming back to the reservoir. Now the pump picks up coolant from the reservoir again, and we have a complete loop. Parallel flow is often used with multiple GPU setups, but is also popular with liquid cooling enthusiasts when connecting the CPU and GPU block. So for some, the parallel flow setup might look impossible since you would think the coolant would choose the shortest possible path to make the trip. But in the world of fluid dynamics, things work differently. So in the parallel setup, coolant will flow simultaneously through two or more water blocks at the same time. In a multi-GPU configuration, the flow and the temperature even out between multiple graphic cards. This means that the parallel setup is less restrictive than a serial one with the same components. Like you can see right here in this loop, this is a semi-parallel loop, so you can see here is a CPU, multiple GPUs, reservoir, and here is a manifold that distributes the coolant for the GPUs. Now that we have covered the basics, we can get to the main course. Many still debate that assembling the loop in a certain order will be more beneficial, bringing lower temperatures. 
There is a myth that putting a radiator before a water block will produce lower temperatures since the liquid cooling will be cooler that way. But this is not entirely true. Now there are some simple pointers that we can give about assembling the loop. So first thing, always keep the reservoir before the pump so that the coolant is directly fed to the pump. Pump reservoir combos are already configured like this. So if you are building a standard cylinder configuration, try to use fewer angle adapters and single GPU setups since all the restrictions of the components add up. You should always consider using a parallel configuration when cooling multiple blocks of similar restrictive properties for more uniform flow. Now, about the loop order itself, the impact it has is minimal. In reality, the pumps that we are using in our liquid-cooled PCs are really powerful. Of course, only if you are using a genuine D5 or DDC pump. The coolant circulates in the loop so fast that thermal equilibrium is achieved quickly. Meaning, even if you swap the order of the loop, your temperatures will end up being almost the same. So in other words, aiming for a specific loop order could complicate the assembly process and ultimately the way the loop looks. And usually it's just not worth it. Okay, there we have it. We've covered some of the most popular topics in custom loop liquid cooling. If you feel that such videos are beneficial, please let us know in the comment section. Take care.